Thanks for checking out this conversation I had with Sam Evans, aka Electric Viking. Now, this is about, well, tech that just around the corner or in fact even here and now, such as charging your electric car in five to 10 minutes. Pretty impressive stuff. How level two charges will actually become more common than maybe the house outlet, maybe. Very fascinating stuff because what is happening right now is ultra rapid development and uh, I think it's going to have a big impact on those people who've been holding out saying well where's that battery that gets me from Melbourne to Sydney or how can I get my car filled just like I would a petrol one this video will answer your questions and so yeah share it with someone you know subscribe give me a thumbs up so I do more like this in the future I don't know next week I'll be in the brand new Tesla Model Y and uh, yeah let's get into the content right now I'm going to China on Monday to test some Xpeng, uh, X9, G9, hopefully the P7 Plus and the Mona. I'm not sure yet because it's got to be in Hong Kong. Is it? But that's the next, that's the next step, Monday. But I want to point out, I think we should talk about, you just said technology is moving fast mm. and we're still in the infancy stage, which is kind of true, really. I agree. But what's really cool is some of the changes we've seen in the last six months. So we're looking at the ability to charge your battery between five to 10 minutes mm -hmm. from from about 20 to 80 percent or 10 to 80 percent even in some batteries byd obviously brought out that new tech mm -hmm. and 1000 kilowatt charging i think zika is saying that they're capable of doing 900 the new xpeng uh, g6 will have around 500 kilowatt charging this is geely's new golden brick battery i think that's about 600 so these lithium ion phosphate batteries cadal they've got the condensed battery with ultra high energy density the technology is remarkable and i think that's why I love this job because it's changing all the time. Whereas yeah. V8 engines, turbo, turbos, they're so boring now. Nothing changes. It's so boring. But yeah. in this sector, a lot of a lot of muscle car dudes have gotten in. A lot, a lot of guys who are like, I'm never going to be into EVs. They get in an EV and they're like, Wow, this thing's insane. Mm -hmm. And then they start seeing the changes in the technology and just they sort of say, Okay, hang on a minute. In ten years' time, mm. most people will be able to charge their cars in ten minutes. There's going to be charging points everywhere. Why would you actually want a gasoline petrol powered vehicle and this is exciting this is actually really exciting that's a very good point there like uh what was the guy's name um he, he did coal miners in cars um i haven't seen him for a while now unfortunately uh but he, he did that thing whereby he actually um you know, like his brother was a, in a coal miner or family member was and he started you know he, he took his model three performance uh to various places around australia and he put him in it and he said floor it go for it and then you just saw these reactions come to their faces and they're like, oh my gosh, okay, I get it now. You know, yeah. take my money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I think this this is this is what electric vehicles provide. And yeah, sometimes it's hilarious when people say to me, Oh, they're quite slow, aren't they? Oh, geez, they're, they're no good, are they? Oh, the batteries are gonna last two years, aren't they? It's like, no, 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 no. Um, mm. actually very fast, let's just jump in and I <laughs> think you you floor it. Mm. Uh, Speaking of uh, batteries not lasting long. Well, what's that about? I mean, for goodness sake, didn't BYD just increase the warranty uh, up to now eight years and more than 100, 160,000 kilometers, something like that, which is a typical 10 year lifespan for most cars anyway. Geely, Geely X5 is unlimited kilometer warranty. Unbelievable. Eight years. Yeah. The, Xpeng G6 is 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the battery warranties are going longer and longer because these companies are seeing that actually the batteries are usually outlasting the life of the car. So yeah, from what with the data we've seen from the older cars, particularly Teslas, we're seeing that they're on average actually getting closer to 400,000 plus kilometers mm -hmm. on the first battery, even longer. There's many cars that have even done even more, more than 600,000 kilometers on the, on the, on the one battery. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. just, just to remind people, most Aussies only do about twelve to fifteen thousand kilometers per yeah, year. Yeah. So you just you just said twenty five to thirty years of driving. Yeah. 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 Okay. Have you have, do you the owner who has got a petrol car right now? Have you still got a twenty five to thirty year old car in your driveway? If you do, well done. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> but most Aussies sell their car in ten years or less, right? Mm. And so the battery thing is not a, not a thing. It really isn't. And when it ranges, there's a whole lot of other stuff there. <laughs> it really is. It is. I should yeah. point out as well, something I just learned. I just spoke to an insurance company in Australia and the lady said to me, they work with electric cars. So the main ones in Australia where if there is a fault with the battery, with, most batteries can be fixed, she said. 
She said mm -hmm. often they can fix them. But if they don't, if they decide not to, the average cost for that insurance company, they said, to replace the battery is lower than the cost to replace an engine. Yeah. Literally, she said it's $4,000. And people wow. are saying it's twenty, thirty thousand. 30000 no. So they're, they're, they're getting these batteries OEM straight from the factory and they're way cheaper than they used to be. So even if you did have a car that was, say, 15 years old and you did want to replace the battery, it's not that expensive to do. It's actually mm. quite cheap. Or you can fix them now. There are companies that can fix them. So there's, there's this narrative there that Channel 7 are still promoting and that these me the media are still promoting that EV batteries mm. will only last a short period of time. They're really expensive. Complete yeah. myths. Complete, it's, it reminds me of cigarettes when they used to just make these cigarettes ads and say how great it was for you. And it's, it's sort of similar. It's similarly stupid. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, I think... You know, subscribe to your channel, subscribe to me, go find some other great Australian uh, electric vehicle uh, content creators out there who are actually telling the truth about these, who are actually living with these cars. Um, you know, I, I thought about just the other week, I spend about a third of my year in anything but a Tesla right now. Uh, the other car we've got is an MG. Uh, it's electric as well. And uh, it's it's great. And would I ever go back to petrol? God, no. No. <laughs> why, why would I? You seen the price of petrol today? No, I'm sure it's not. I don't look at it anymore. You know, you know when you yeah. don't need to, you don't worry about it. It's actually like removing an element of stress from your life. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And um, you know, we're, we're fortunate we can uh, do off street parking so we're on electric vehicle plans. So between eleven and two o'clock today, we we charge our car for free, and uh, free. overnight, yeah, for free. And um, between uh, midnight and 6 a.m., it's only eight cents per kilowatt hour. So basically, my fuel bill is either zero or three or four dollars. Wow. For a week. What, what company is yeah. that? What? that? So that's um, through Ovo Energy. So um, they're a, the energy retailer, and um, yep. th that's their electric vehicle plan. And I do like it. I'm, I, I haven't got shares, I swear to goodness. <laughs> but they. Uh, they can pay me. They can pay me. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, the deal with them is they actually, you have to estimate what your energy use will be across a year. So all you do is you look at your typical bill, say in summer, and you just times it by 12 and you say, I'm, I'm going to use this much energy per year. And then every month, your electricity bill is always the same. And right now, we're already about almost $800 in credit with these guys. We only pay $125 per month and we're uh, $800 in credit with them because we've got a battery out there. Yeah, we've got a battery, we've got solar. Yeah. We don't use a lot of energy. Yeah. And we've got two electric yeah. cars. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah that's, that's really cool. It's it's probably a big issue that we should talk about as well, that I wonder if there's any, um, there's obviously been some negative stories right now around labor, but it's been kind of coincidental that they just unveiled that $2.3 billion home battery incentive. Yeah, which is very good. Very Did you good. want to explain that to people what that's about? Oh, mate. So basically, yeah. um, up to date, there's either been you, you can either get the solar or the battery incentive, right? So if you have ever claimed for your roof, and if you haven't, you need to do it. Mm. Um, there's a both normally a state and a national, uh, federal rather, um, rebate to actually go get solar and or a battery. And mm. the battery one has never been that generous. And now, what is it? Three thousand, five thousand? I forget what the dollar amount is. Five thousand. Yeah. 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 So a substantial reduction in the actual price because the batteries at the moment are still really not worth it. But yeah. that that makes it worth it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I think when I was and looking you can at stack it with EV incentives, sorry, battery incentives in the states as well, meaning that exactly. could be quite a bit more than that. Yep, and that's it. Combine all the same as you can in the world. And I, I, even today, especially with our very low selling rate with solar, you're mad to not get solar in a battery. And because solar is pretty cheap in Australia compared to what I understand um, our American friends pay for it, I don't know why you pay so much for it. Um, yeah. it basically, I would recommend, because it's such a low feed-in tariff rate, that's the amount of money you get back by throwing energy into the market. Mm -hmm. uh, just get a battery if you can afford one, okay? Or better yet, get a vehicle that has potentially that vehicle to home load, you know, vehicle to, or yeah. vehicle to grid, anything like that, so that your big battery out there that's in your car can be used by your house. And we saw some great, great stories about that uh, recently with the, you know, the typhoons and, you know, the, uh, what typhoons? What was it in the northern New South Wales, southern Queensland? Cyclone? Cyclone. It's a cyclone, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And uh, people were actually using the life-saving equip equipment, like keeping the dialysis machine going uh, by using their car to power the home and the life-saving equipment. 
Yeah. And so getting any, any sort of battery, especially this new skin that's come out, very good. So yeah, I'll leave a link to it below. That's a good point. Vehicle to load, most electric cars have that. So when, mm. there's a, when the power goes out, if you don't have a home battery or if your home battery after a few days, the power's still out and maybe you run out of power, yeah. you can still use your, your electric car to power your fridge or, yep. or a heater. It's just things that are absolutely essential. And that would last you pro probably a week just using minimum, minimal, yes. minimum things. Really something where you're going to be saying to yourself, oh, my neighbor doesn't have this. I kind of feel good that, you know, you can see everyone else doesn't have it. And you might be able to help your neighbors if, you, if you're in that situation, I think, which is kind of a good, a good situation to be in. We can help other people. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So, you know, there's a lot of benefits of going electric and, you know, between the lifestyle changes you can make and also the benefits that your electric vehicle brings you, you know, being able to go glamping, uh, taking your TV with you. <laughs> Because you can, yeah, <laughs> and uh, providing you know energy for your home and blackouts uh, yeah. through to yeah. your neighbours. Um, people also, I think there's a scheme out there. Forget what they're called. Um, I'm reaching out to the guys at the moment because I like what they're doing. They're called WeVolt. Um, it's kind of like plug share, whereby you offer up your charger on your home uh, and yeah. you make it available for people to use at a small cost. So it might well, either going to cost you know cover your costs or maybe give you a little bit of money in your bank in your bank. Which yeah. is lovely, you know. Yeah, that's a great idea because that would mean that there would be access to potentially millions of charges around mm -hmm. around Australia, with probably between seven to twenty two kilowatt charging speed, which is would be insane. Imagine if you wanted to go in the outback of Australia. There's not going to be gas stations everywhere. There's not going to be fuel stations, but there could potentially be these charges yes. in thousands of locations. So I really like that idea. Yeah, absolutely yeah. right. And uh, yeah, that's a good point to make actually that, um, you know, you can easily circumnavigate Australia. There's most electricity available everywhere. Yeah. Um, if there ain't, it's normally got solar. It's normally got a generator of some sort. And even if it was powered by dirty, dirty diesel, it's still going to be a lot better for the environment compared to what, um, you know, and that's because of the conversion rate. Just electric vehicles yeah. are so good at turning the energy through those motors to propulsion. And so it's not over 90 percent. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Compared to a petrol diesel thing, about 30, 40% best case. Yeah. All right. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you want to see this and other stuff from behind the scenes or early access, check out my Kofi page for that. Super thanks is more than welcome. And otherwise, YouTube thinks you might actually like one of these videos. So yeah, give them a click. And uh, hope to see you real soon in the new Model Y.